In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create realistic water caustics in Blender. Now to follow along with this tutorial, you'll need to use the Cycles Rendering Engine, so this method for creating caustic doesn't work in Eevee, so make sure you're using Cycles Render. And then if you also want to learn how to create the Pool Donut, which I added into this final render, then I'll be posting a video soon on how to create a Pool Donut, so when that video is released, the link will be in the description. You can also help support the channel and purchase the finished tutorial project files on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, so a link to that is in the description. So if you've already set up your scene, then you can just skip to the end of the video using the timestamps in the description, and I'll show you how to set up the water caustics. But I'll start by just modeling a basic scene and setting up some materials and lighting. So let's just start by deleting everything, and I'm going to add a new mesh. Let's add a plane. Now for this plane, I'm going to add a modifier. So let's go to the modifiers, and I'm going to search for the ocean modifier. So this is going to give a really cool water effect. And you can see there is a time value here, so you can animate the time value to make the ocean move. Now, if you just use a really flat plane without any detail, then you're not going to be able to see the water caustics because the water caustic kind of ripple on the bottom of the pool when the water ripples. So you are going to need to make sure you have some sort of object with some sort of detail. So that's why I'm using this ocean modifier. So just make sure your water has some sort of detail on the surface. Now we also have a resolution viewport and render, and I'm going to turn these both up to 15. Now if that is a bit too laggy in your scene, you could turn the viewport down, but then just have the render higher. But I'm going to turn them both to 15 so it has more detail. Now also the waves are a little bit large, and for like a pool scene, I don't really want the waves to be that big. So if I open up the waves here, let's turn the scale to a 0.3. Now what I'm going to do is scale the entire thing down a little bit. Let's go to top view and I'm just going to move it over here. And then what I'm going to do is have it repeat on the X and the Y by two so that it's a bit bigger. So now you can see if I just use that time value there, you can see the water isn't quite bumping around as much because it's a bit smaller. So all the little waves and ripples are a bit smaller because we're repeating it. So now I want to add another object, which is the bottom of the pool, for the shadow caustics to actually cast a shadow to the bottom of the pool. So for this, I'm going to add a cube, and let's scale the cube up. Let's go to top view and just scale it up slightly smaller than the water. If I go into edit mode, let's squish it down so it's a bit smaller like that. So it's about one of those blender cubes long. Let's go to wireframe. We'll just box select the top and bring the top down. All right, just like that. And then if we go to the face select and select the top face, we'll delete the faces. Then I'll go to the vertex select, alt select the vertices there on the top, and I can extrude them and then scale them way up just like that. And it looks like we need to select everything and hit shift N to recalculate the normals. So there we go, just for the basic pool object. I'm also going to click on add modifier and I'm just going to add a bevel modifier and I'll turn the segments up pretty high like maybe a six or even a seven and then I can also turn the amount down and then I'll use the object context menu and shade the object smooth. So now let's set up some lighting. So to create a nice sky background to look like it's daytime with a blue sky, I'll go here to the world properties and I'm going to click on the yellow dot next to color and I'll choose environment texture and then just click on the open button. And I'm going to be adding in this Lonely Road Afternoon Pure Sky from polyhaven.com. So the link is in the video description if you want to download it. And I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So I'm just going to open this up. And if I go into the rendered viewport mode, there we go. We now have some nice bright sky lighting. And also right here on the render properties, make sure you're using the Cycles Rendering Engine because this effect won't work in Blender EV. Also, let's go to the color management and I'm going to use the View Transformer Filmic. And I'll set the look to very high contrast because it makes everything look more saturated and contrasted. Now I also want to add a sunlight so that we can actually have like bright direct light shining down into the pool. So I'm going to go to the add menu and add a light. We're going to add a sunlight. Let's just bring the sunlight up here and we can rotate it over slightly, rotate it over kind of like that. And then if we go here to the light settings, I want to turn the strength to three so it's a bit brighter. So now let's create the materials. So if I just select the ocean material, let's go here to the shading workspace, just select the ocean object. We're going to click on new to add a new material and I can just call this like water and I'm going to make the roughness zero. So if I go into the rendered viewport mode, the roughness is going to be zero. So it'll be really shiny, but you still can't see through it. So if I open up the transmission, we'll turn the transmission all the way up to one. So now you can actually see through the water and then to just make it look a bit more like pool water, I'm going to make it this bright blue color. And here's the hex value if you want to punch in the same color I'm using. So we now have a nice blue colored water. Let's select the pool and add a new material to the pool object. And I can just rename this to pool. And for this, I'll turn the roughness down to a 0.2 so it's a bit more shiny. And then I'll also make this a slight blue color. And here is the hex value if you want to punch in the same exact color that I'm using. 
So now I'll show you how to set up the caustics, because right now you can't actually see any caustics even though the light is shining through the water. So let's go back here to the layout. So to make the caustics work, of course we need to be in the cycles rendering engine, and then we need to select the light here, so select the sunlight, and right here on the sunlight settings on the object data properties, we need to turn on shadow caustics. And so this way any shadows which are from this light are going to have the caustics. Now what we also need to do is select the water, and we need to click over here to go to the object properties, Properties, and we need to open up the shading tab. And you can see right here there's caustics, and so there's two options. There's cast shadow caustics and receive shadow caustics. So for the water, we want to check mark cast shadow caustics. Then we want to click on the other object, so the pool, which is going to be underneath the water. And this one, we want to receive shadow caustics. And now you can actually see it showing up. So I can kind of zoom down in here. It is a little bit laggy because, you know, it cycles render. So it's a ray trace render engine and it's rendering it really realistically. So you can see it is taking a little bit to load up in the viewport, but we now have some really realistic caustics under the water. And then one other thing to note is that the light here needs to have a small angle because if you go to the light settings and turn up this angle, if you turn the angle up really big, that's going to make a really soft light, but that's not really realistic for a sunlight. And so you're really not going to be able to see the caustics. If I turn the angle way down or just just leave it at the default. The light is a lot more sharper, so the shadows are sharper, so you can see the caustics better. And then of course, if you wanna animate the water, you can go to the modifiers and you can just animate this time value right here. So for a scene like this at 24 frames per second with a 250 frame animation, I like to go to frame one and you can hover your mouse over the time value and hit the I key to inset a keyframe. Then you can go to the very end, so 250. And I like to turn the time to around 30 and then hit the I key to inset a keyframe. And then select everything by hitting the A key in the timeline and you can hit the T key and you can change the interpolation type to linear. And this way the ocean is gonna play at a consistent speed, so it's not gonna speed up and slow down. So you can see the waves are just moving a little bit. Now if I go into the rendered viewport mode, you can see it is a little bit laggy and kinda of hard to actually see it showing up, but here is the final render. So when you actually render this out, this is the final animation. So that's how you can create realistic water caustics in Blender. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to learn how to create a pool donut like I added into this final render, then you can check out the next tutorial which I'll be posting soon so when that tutorial is released I'll have it linked in the video description and right up there on the end screen. And if you found this video helpful and you'd like to help support this channel you can also purchase the finished tutorial project files on my Gumroad and Patreon page. Links are in the description. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.